Welcome back to Money Exchange. Bitcoin, what is it? How do you buy it? Who accepts it? And is it just another trendy alternative way to barter with others without using real common currency? Karen Hohenstein from IG Markets joins us to answer the burning questions. Karen, thanks very much for your time this evening. Tell us a little bit That's about right. what Bitcoin is and where do we buy it and how is it used? Yep, fair enough. So uh, Bitcoin's a relative new currency. It was created back in 2009 by an unknown source. Um, people have been trying to track down who they are or what, who the group is. Um, to date, no one's had any luck. Um, it's an electronic payment system that obviously moves Bitcoins around the world. So rather than sending dollars across the world, you send Bitcoins instead. Um, no one controls this market, so it can't be influenced by governments um, with their monetary policies. It's purely supply and demand. Um, every transaction is recorded on something called a blockchain, which is one big public ledger. So when you move money around, you can see exactly where it is and work out where it's going. Um, they're created by a process called mining, which is where you get your computer and use the processing power to um, find these bitcoins. So it's all done off mathematical proof. So when your computer finds the solves a complex problem, you get rewarded with an amount of bitcoins. Back in the day, you used to, be able to do it with um, a couple of computers at your house. These days, it's quite sophisticated. You get companies that spend millions of dollars and buy these computers around the world um, to mine these bitcoins. So Market cap at the moment is around about three and a half billion dollars, so quite a large thing. Um, and probably one of the best things I think about Bitcoin is they trade 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you're not restricted by the banks as to when you can move your money around in public holidays. And best of all, you can send as much money as you want or as many Bitcoins as you want and it'll go through for free. If you want to speed it up and pay a few dollars, you can have it there within a shorter period of time, whether it be five or ten minutes. So great way of moving money around the world without having to worry about the banks. So with respect to Bitcoin, Kieran, in the last few years, it's obviously started to become uh, more popular amongst the younger folks, for, I, I think, in, in the financial markets rather than the older ones, in, in my experience anyway. What would drive me to want to own Bitcoins? You know, is it, an, is it a volatile currency value? I mean, what's the, what's the return on investment been perhaps for the last 12 months if someone had bought some maybe a year or so ago? Um, last 12 months you wouldn't be too happy because about 12 months ago they were trading over $1,000 and then um, the largest Bitcoin exchange got hacked. Um, since then the price has fell to around $250. So all the gross return on investments. Um, so yeah, if you did buy back then you'd be kicking yourself now if you buy much cheaper. So Karen... And, yeah, you're right, it is for the younger generation. Um, older people are in it as well. There's some quite old people who are investing millions of dollars in it. Um, but I guess if you're into technology and new things, it's a great way to get exposed to a new emerging market with a bit of volatility. And I guess if you're, if you're young, you've got a bit of money to play around with, then you always want to try some new exciting things. So just be a little bit more specific for me with respect to the, the valuation. What determines the ongoing valuation of, of Bitcoin? Because obviously it's not a common currency. Is it backed by anything? Uh, no, nothing at all. It's not backed by any central government at all. So it's purely a supply and demand. Um, there's a large number of exchanges that obviously quote the price of Bitcoin that you can buy and sell them. So people track those ones there, see how they're going. You've got, you can trade Bitcoin in pretty much any currency you want. So if someone does some large orders in the US, you'll see similar orders appear in Australia, China, Europe as well. So it all is quite um, set up like that. And there's a lot of arbitrage in there that does disappear quite quickly because these people here have been a big market there. There's money to be made. So all the big investors are there as well in the background. Um, the price can move off news at all times, so being decentralised, news could come from anywhere around the world. So you've got to be an idea, keep an eye idea on what different government regulation is doing, um, it, what new firms accept Bitcoin, what influential people mention about Bitcoin as well. Um, there's people like Bill Gates, Richard Branson, um, lots recently have made comments about Bitcoin, what their thoughts are on it and how they enjoy it. Um, you've also got people like Citibank saying that it's got potential to save billions of dollars in the next five, six years on remittance. So all those factors in one make it quite an interesting thing. And the other thing I mentioned too is sometimes these exchanges can get hacked, which then makes it quite volatile as well, as people get frustrated, concerned that the Bitcoins aren't safe, and it causes the price to jump up and down as they move their coins between the exchanges. So Kieran, at IG Markets, obviously you guys deal in Bitcoins. If I want to buy some Bitcoins after tonight's show, what do I do? Um, literally, if you open an account with it, you can deposit cash straight in your account on the spot. And then we quote Bitcoin against the sterling, um, the yen, 
um, euro US dollar. So literally purchase a contract there, whether it be for 10 coins or 1,000 coins or 100, whatever amount you want. Um, best of all with us, you can actually go short the market. So if you think Bitcoin is going to keep on falling like it has throughout the last year, you actually sell and make profit off the market going down and buy it back at a later date to close your trade. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Kieran. I really appreciate your time tonight in explaining for us what exactly is something that's been a bit complicated for many of us. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Thanks for that. Now it's time for our currency quiz question of the week. And this week, it's doubled in value to $1,000. So for $1,000 tonight, here's our currency quiz question. There are four countries that use this currency as legal tender. It was given its current name in 1961, and today is a country that is considered an emerging market, economy heavily reliant on commodities. The country has a chequered history due to apartheid, but in 2012, the president told the Reserve Bank to issue a complete set of banknotes bearing the face of Nelson Mandela. I am referring to the South African what? If you think you know what the name of the South African currency is, all you need to go is moneyexchangetv.com, type in your answer, and if you're the first person, you'll win $1,000 cash. That's moneyexchangetv.com, and type us in your answer. Now, before I go tonight, I've got some exciting news about next week's program. Tomorrow, I'm jumping on a plane and heading to London to interview a series of currency traders, economists and senior banking analysts right at the coalface, the heartbeat of the currency markets, Canary Wharf. So make sure you join me next week here on Money Exchange to find out about what the smart money is doing in London in global currency markets. Well, that's all we have time for tonight. Thanks for your company. I'll see you again next week.